So for this video, uh, we will be analyzing and designing members for tension. But before that, um, let me refresh you on the things we had last meeting. So we had two state na may encounter dito. First is the tensile yielding which occurs on the gross section. We're in our nominal tensile strength Pn is equal to the minimum yield stress multiplied by the gross area. And the second one naman is the tensile rupture which occur on the net section. We're in our nominal tensile strength is equal to the minimum tensile strength multiplied by the effective net area wherein our effective net area is equal to the net area multiplied by a certain shear lag factor in which yung shear lag factor uh, can be determined sa ating NSCP 2015 and main natin siya mamaya so we have two approach first is the load and resistance factor design and the second one is the allowable stress design in which under LRFD our nominal tensile strength uh, will be multiplied by a certain resistance factor phi and it must be greater than our PU kung saan ang, uh, ang ating resistance factor for tension phi is equal to 0 0.90 and sa ESD naman we will just divide PN all over the safety factor for tension omega and it must be greater than our PA kung saan ang ating omega T is equal to 1.67 and sa tensile rupture naman under LRFD our phi our resistance factor would now be equal to 0 0.75 and our omega t would be equal to 2.0 by the way itong mga factor na to is mahanap under uh, chapter 5 of our NSCP Next is our slenderness limit, our slenderness ratio. Kung saan i-divide lang natin ang ating uh, total length sa gyration. And it must be lesser than or equal to 300. Sorry, it must be lesser than e or equal to 300. So, we're now ready to have our first example. So, for our first example, we will try to design a W shape uh, tension member. Magde-design tayo dito. So, dalawang gagawin natin for this chapter. We will design and we will analyze a member. So, for our example number one,
Select an ASTM A992W shape with 200mm nominal depth to carry a dead load of 130 kN and a live load of 400 kN in tension. The member is 7.5m long. Verify the member strength by both LRFT and ASD with the bolted end connection as shown. Verify that the member satisfies the recommended slenderness limit and assume that connection limit states do not govern. So for ASTM A992, our yield stress is 345 MPa and our tensile strength is 450 MPa. And our length of connection is 3 at 75 mm. That load is 130 kN, live load is 400 kN. So, on your CSI steel application, um, you can search the different geometrical properties of the section. In CSI steel, kung wala kayong libro ng uh, steel book, or wala kayong libro, uh, we can, you can download that on the Google Play CSI Steel application. For, for our required tensile strength, our PU is equal to 1.2 dead load plus live load. So, substituting the values. Our tensile strength under LRFD is 796 kN and for ASD we'll just multi uh, add the two, the dead load and the live load. So 130 plus 400 is equal to 530 kN. So we are now ready to determine the available tensile yielding strength. So for available tensile yielding strength, Pn is equal to Fy multiplied by the gross area, where our uh, yield stress is 345 newton over millimeter squared. Yan para makita nyo kung paano natin makukuha yung kilo newton. Multiplied by the gross area, which is 300 at eh, 3,970 square millimeter. So multiplying the two, we have 1,369.65 kN. So for LRFD, we will just multiply Pn by the resistance factor 0 0.9. So it would be equal to 1,232.69 kN. And comparing it with our required tensile strength, 796 kN, it is much greater. So, okay siya. And sa ASD naman, we will just divide our nominal strength by the omega t Ayan. so it would be equal to 820.15 kN and compare natin siya sa uh, required tensile strength under ASD it is much greater so Okay, sha.
so for the second state the available tensile rupture strength will determine the nominal tensile strength en by multiplying the tensile strength by the effective net area kung saan ang ating effective net area is equal to net area by a shear lag factor maliti yung shear lag factor natin so our section is w shape so we will consider case 2 to open nyo na lang yung nscp kung di nyo mabasa and then our case 7 so we will be considering the 2 so for case 2 shear lag factor is equal to 1 minus the connection eccentricity x bar all over the length of connection and for case 7 naman um, we'll just comparing the bf by the two thirds of the depth at kung sino yung mas malaki sa kanila yun yung i-consider natin between case 2 and uh, case 7 So, for case 2, shear lag factor is equal to 1 minus the eccentricity connection x bar all over the length of connection. So, we will try to divide the W200 by 31.3 into 2 para maging WT100 by 15.65. So, makadedetermine natin yung uh, geometrical properties niya in your CSI still up or in depth na is 105 para makuha natin yung uh, eccentricity niya we will just uh, uh, subtract the depth by our uh, centroid y o and centroid natin is 83.9 so difference is 21.1 millimeter so our centricity connection is 21.1 so substituting the values yeah so we have 3 at 75 mm so for case to our shear lag factor is 0 0.906 And for the case 7, B our uh, the BF of this section is one hundred thirty four. Mm, flange width and then compare lang natin siya sa 2 third ng depth so shear lag factor 0 0.85 so we will consider whichever is greater kaya mas malaking 0 0.906 yun gagamitin natin so we are now ready to determine the net area so paano determine yung net area natin tatanggalin lang na lahat natin yung area na kinover nung uh, mga uh, nung connection nung bolt so it, it will be equal to area of the cross section minus yung uh, diameter ng bolt and remember na mag a tayo ng 2mm as discussed last meeting kung bolted siya we will add 2mm yan multiplied by the thickness of the flange so our an now would be equal to three thousand seventy two point four millimeter square millimeter 
Now we are ready to determine the effective net area AE. So multiplying the 2 AN by the shear lag factor, makaka natin yung AE. And AE is now equal to 2783.59 square millimeter. So proceeding. Our nominal tensile strength now is substitute lang natin would be equal to one thousand two hundred fifty two point sixty two kilonewton. So for LRFT, we will just multiply our PN by 0 0.75 na siya. Kasi it is under tensile rupture na. So sa tensile yielding, 0 0.9. Dito sa tensile rupture, 0 0.75. So our uh, answer is 939.46 kN and it's much greater than our PU which is only 796 kN so okay siya and then for ASD we will multiply uh, divide the nominal tensile strength by omega T dito naman is 2.0 kung sa tensile yielding it is 1.67 dito sa tensile rupture it is 2.0 so it will be now equal to 626.31 kilonewton and it must great much greater than our PA which is only 530 kilonewton yan okay siya so meron pang isang hinihingi yung problem the slenderness uh, limit nandito lang naman yung slenderness limit Recommended is slenderness limit. Di divide lang natin yung total length ng member, which is uh, seven thousand five hundred millimeter, seven point five, right? Divide by the radius of gyration. Radius of gyration is 32.02, so it's equal to 234.23, and it is lesser than 300. Yeah, okay, sha, satisfying the limit. So we can now conclude that the section we design W200 by 31.3 is adequate to carry the given loads. Yeah.